Hello, hello, Awesome Soul, back at it again with those lovely, lovely bot reviews. Today, I will be reviewing the Aether Lord by Lord Force. So, as you can see, it is, of course, a hover, but it is also a ultralight hover, meaning it uses the really, really, really light cubes wherever possible and avoids the big solid cubes unless absolutely necessary. Obviously, this thing is packing a speedometer in order to show off the speed, and uh, speed it certainly has. This thing is incredibly fast. It's going around 250, it can at least sometimes get up to. Um, and it's also packing a blink module, so it definitely has a need for speed. Uh, the thing about this, though, is, first off, not entirely sure it honestly needs the blink module. It could be better served actually saving that power, or the saving the CPU and therefore getting more power if you take out the blink module. Just because this thing is so incredibly fast, it can get around very, very easily. So, it doesn't exactly need it. The games I've played of this kind of don't really need it. Like, I've used it maybe three times, and that was always to escape if I absolutely had to. I've never actually used it to get into a battle, so possibly what you could do is switch it out for a disc shield module if you want to go more supportive, or an EMP module if you want to go supportive slash offensive. And then you could also go for a ghost module, because this thing is actually fast enough to reliably run one of those. I know I say that the ghost module isn't the most viable, and that's true. It's just kind of niche, I guess you could say. You really have to have a high speed in order to take advantage fully of it. So yeah, personally, I don't think Blink is the right choice, but a module in this thing still can be pretty useful. Just because you can get around really quickly and therefore use your module, um, I guess, in more situations? Yeah, let's go with that. So the next thing are the Nanos, which I'm using right now. They are not really using a whole lot of power, which is really good. So they are the mid-sized ones, and I guess you could upsize them if you wanted to, but in all honesty, I think the mid-sized ones are actually the right choice for this build. Mainly because, like I said, they're not drawing a whole lot of power, so you can, you know, get some reliable healing done while still being able to, you know, switch and stay in the fight with your plasmas. Rather than, you know, with the other ones, it'll drain your power pretty much instantly, and then you'll have nothing left to fight with. So that would make you more of a dedicated support, which I don't think this bot is really meant to be. I definitely see this as a mixed bot, supporting where it can and attacking where it can. Sort of uh, a team player, I guess you could say. Now, Plasma. Of course, we come to the Plasma. Its only real offensive capabilities lie within this weapon. And it's a good choice, it is the full-sized Plasma. But obviously, you can't really hit flying units all that well, or apparently hover units, because uh, I'm having a bit of a hard time. There we go, finally. So, going back to the whole team player thing, you absolutely need to stick with other players, especially those that are able to take out air units rather easily, because this thing, if you go up against an air unit, you're gonna have a bad time. So, stick with your friends, that's for certain. But, the other thing I do need to say about this is... You need to add at least one more plasma, because if you lose one single plasma, your fire rate is cut drastically, and that's not good for something that falls apart so easily, 
which is by design, obviously. It's meant to be super fast and get to the fight quickly, dish out its plasma, and then run away. So I'm not faulting it for that at all. Uh, I honestly think it just needs a fifth one, and it would fit rather neatly on top, actually. So it wouldn't really be that big of a deal. I think it actually does have enough clearance to stick it on, and it's barely any additional CPU, so it's not really going to take a chunk out of your power usage either. Uh, the next thing I do need to talk about is... Oh, we've lost our blink. Can we escape? This is... N oh, man. Okay. Come on. Wait, do we only have one hover? Huh. We only have one hover. Odd. But miraculous. Anyways. What was I getting at? Ah, yes. The quote-unquote coring of this bot is a little bit of a problem. Uh, once I go into the garage bay after this video, I will be showing off what I'm talking about in better detail, but just to give the basics here... Oh, actually, never mind. That will do it. So, we will go ahead and jump into the garage bay and then talk about it. That's odd. I have a feeling the score doubling bug is still a thing because we did really well. But then again, we did die twice. I don't know. I'll, uh, I'll let you be the judge of this. So here we are, back in the good old-fashioned garage bay. Now, what exactly was I alluding to? Well, this. This is, like, the main culprit, I guess you could say, that sort of clued me into this possible problem. Now, normally, I'm all about rods. Rods are really, really good for uh, protecting parts. Mainly when they're surrounded by cubes, and you've got this thing sort of blasted off. Instead of it being attached here, it's attached back here. So it's less likely to fall off as easily. If done correctly, of course. But what we have here is a rod holding onto this hover that feeds into the center of mass, which has two rods on either side of it, and then from those rods as well, they're pretty much connected to their own hovers. So that's a slight problem. Now, I realize that there isn't a whole lot of space to work with inside this bot, but it's just something to consider, I guess. So what we have here is obviously a plasma cannon, which is a fairly large target. So once this thing is taken out, any residual damage will go into the cube, and then it'll go into this cube, and then it'll go into this rod, and then from that rod, it will take out this hover, because obviously the rod is connected to this cube right here. So that's something you could possibly work on. Uh, other than that, though, there aren't really a huge amount of problems with the bot. One tiny little gripe, Maybe move these one block forward. I don't really know if it's like that for a reason, if it's going to affect turning, if it's one block further out, but I don't know. It's just something to consider. So all in all, this is a fairly solid bot. There aren't really too many problems, and for what it is, a super light bot, it's definitely really good. So. With all of those in mind, I would, yeah, definitely recommend the bot. Um, check it out on the CRF, or you could wait for the upgraded version, which I'm sure will be up sooner or later after this video goes out. So, with that, guys, I will bring this episode to a close. I, of course, have been the Awesome Soul. I thank you so very much for watching. Leave your bot suggestions in the description below. I know I get a lot of them, so I can't really get around to every single one. Obviously, hopefully you understand. But anyways, I will end the video here. Take care, everyone. I will see you next time.